Hello everyone, this is Buddy Club Binks and welcome back to Let's Play Aviary Attorney. We are continuing on in the middle of the second case's trial. We just presented the chocolate wrapper. Look at this. What am I supposed to be looking at? It is the paper wrapper to a piece of chocolate. It was found in the Louvre, the Salle de Tibre, to be precise, and we can date its consumption to the day of the incident. You're not suggesting that Major Howell ate a, po a piece of poisoned chocolate. Chocolate itself is bad for dogs, so. Double poison. <laughs> Moments before he died, I most certainly am. Oh, okay. Little favor with the jury. Did you see this wrapper at the crime scene for yourself, Inspector? The police force does not have the time nor resources to trawl every piece of trash at every crime scene, I'm afraid. In other words, you overlooked it. Astounding unprofessionalism again. The prosecution is right to be disgusted. What a disgraceful display, Inspector. I offer my apologies, Your Honor. I just... Every time he comes here, he gets uh, insulted to death because he sucks at his job. It's like, bruh, why you keep coming back? I don't want your apologies. I want you to do your damn job properly. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. As you wish, I'll take my leave. Until next time, messieurs. So, let me get this straight. This chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene. Correct. And you have reason to believe that it was consumed on the day of the incident? I do. I have an expert food-tasting witness who is willing to testify if need be. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anyone like that. Who on earth are you talking about, Falcon? Sparrowson? Please. <laughs> Please, honey. Oh, I see. Hmm, but do you know for certain that Major Howell consumed this chocolate? Well, that is a fact that we are still investigating. I see. And do you have evidence that this chocolate was in fact poisoned. Again, that is something that may require a little more time to definitively prove. So then, in actuality, you do not have evidence that Major Hal consumed some poison chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you plucked straight out of the gutter. That's weak, even for you, JJ. Damn. Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. He is a man who claims to have had an excellent view of the people going in and out of the Louvre at the time of the incident. I call upon Monsieur Toussaint Kingly. Could the witness please approach the stand and recite the oath? Oh, it's you. What's up, bro? Um... I don't remember what voice I gave you. Dang, damn it. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Oh, right, the oath. Uh, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear. To tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please, uh, please state your full name and occupation for the court record. My name is Toussaint Kingley and I'm a person who fishes. And I'm giving him an accent for no reason, because I'm just, I don't know. A person who fishes, so you are a fisherman? Oh, oh, is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. I beg your pardon? Here comes Toussaint Kingley, the kingfisher. Clearly he must be a fisherman, because didn't you hear? All kingfishers are fishermen. Well, you are carrying a fishing rod. And? And? Can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel, and bait without being branded a fisherman? 
Look, look! The prosecutor's carrying a riding crop. Clearly, he must be a horse jockey. Oh, for pity's sake. Fine, fine. We can list your occupation as person who fishes and not fisherman. Thank you. Sorry, you, you have a weird complex. <laughs> Actually, why do you carry a riding crop, Severine? I've never seen you ride a horse. That's a great question for Francisca von Karma. Why on earth does she always use that? And then it became a whip. It went from a riding crop to a whip. It's like, girl, do you have a thing with horses? Do you have BDSM? What's going on? What's your story? Your backstory? They never explain it. Ever. I think she just... She just to say this, and she likes to cause pain. <laughs> so, Severine, is that the same for you? I don't know, JJ. Why do you, a 30-something-year-old with no health problems, carry a cane? This is veering quite far off the course. Could the prosecution please get back to his questions? Of course, your honor. Monsieur Kingley, is it true that you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? Yes, I was sitting upon a railing of the Pont des Arts. The Pont des Arts? That's the new bridge that's just a stone's throw from the Louvre's south entrance, correct? That's right. And what were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing. Kingfishers, am I right, Falcon? So you would have had plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the palace. Can you tell us who you saw? Well, the Louvre's a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m., I saw the king, Louis Philippe himself, enter the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then around 9:30 a.m., I saw this shifty-looking fox looking around, the, lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to the witness's use of the term "shifty-looking." It's a vague and biased description. No, really, he looks super shifty. I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully. Oh, come on! And then I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. I feel like you're lying. Rub the stem of a rose, you say? As if he were applying something to the flower, perhaps? Well, monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course, it was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. But yeah, it definitely looked like he was putting some sort of powder on the stem. <laughs> Wow, even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court, it sounds like what we have here is a direct witnessing of the defendant readying the murder weapon. The defense claims that the rose was never poisoned, and yet, here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury. I do too. You do? What does it smell like? It smells like bullshit. <laughs> Literal. <laughs> no question. He saw a shifty-looking criminal readying poison and cackling near the scene of the crime? That's not believable at all. I think you might be right. I wonder if I have any evidence that calls Toussaint's story into doubt. Do we? Um... Did we get this from him? The book? I don't know. I feel like it's this one. Found in the, in the garden by the Louvre's west entrance. Like, that must be important, right? Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again? 
You just heard the witness directly describe your client readying poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, your honor. Ugh! Fine. Do your thing. Go on, Falcon. Go make a fool out of yourself. Wow. Rude. All right. Shifty looking. I'm kind of curious about the powder, but I'm worried about losing... Because we don't have any evidence regarding the powder, even though I'm curious. I have a feeling it has to do with the location, so let's go with that. Monsieur Kingley, you say that you were sitting upon the railings of the Pont des Arts on the morning of the incident. Yep. Uh, I don't think that's a good question, so... What entrances can you see from that bridge? Monsieur Kingley, you had a good view of the Louvre's south entrance, didn't you? Yep, the Pont des Arts is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Gallery south side. Pont des Arts is right there. But then the Tuileries Garden is all the way over there, so... If we got the page from there, then we shouldn't... Then he's lying about where he was, right? What about the other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like if you were entering from Tuileries Gardens or the Place de Carousel? Nah, I couldn't possibly see those areas from the bridge. But of course, that isn't relevant. Monsieur Kingley, witness Prince Juan entering the south entrance with flower in hand, and that's what counts. What if he used another entrance? What if Prince Juan didn't enter from the south entrance? What if he approached the Louvre from... Yeah, the gardens. Duility's gardens to the west. That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered the Louvre from Duility's gardens? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. I have definitive proof that Prince Juan approached from the west, not the south. Hey, I know what I saw, monsieur. I'm doubtful, too. Go on, JJ. Show us this definitive proof that Prince Juan entered from the Louvre from Tuileries Gardens. The page, right? Look at this. A book page? Page 44 of... Another typo. Of Don Quixote, specifically. It was found just outside the Louvre's west entrance. This proves nothing. I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for some time. And yes, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked. You do realize what this means, don't you, Severin? The defendant was present in Tuileries Gardens prior to entering the Louvre. This also means that, in all likelihood, the defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance, not the south, and this guy is a liar McLiar pants. He could not possibly have been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Pont des Arts. What? I know what I saw, Monsieur! A fine theory, Falcon, but maybe the defendant took the long way round. One can still travel from Tuileries to the Louvre South entrance by walking along the river. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery. Let's not say silly things, Cocorico. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there, to mislead the investigation. Now you're the one who's blindly speculating. You're desperate. It, it's not blind speculation. It's a viable hypothesis. 
How dare you! <laughs> you are fond of logic, aren't you, Kokoriko? Isn't it one of your special skills, just like Miles Edgeworth? Let's talk about Oakum's Razor. When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories takes fewer assumptions? 1. The page from Prince Juan's book fell out on his way to the Louvre's south entrance. 2. Prince Juan deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would be discovered. Then he took the long way around. How dare you! The nerve of you to lecture me on such basic philosophical concepts. All right, you two, get a room. Clearly, you're going to tear each other's clothes off in a second. <laughs> like, come on. I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes, you basic bitch. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, the savagery. The savagery. And over here, Sparrows is just eating popcorn on the side like, Damn! Falcon! Damn! <laughs> Get him! <laughs> oh, love it. Monsieur Falcon, please calm yourself. What is the point of all this yammering and fighting? The ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricated, made up, utter fiction. No, no, everything I've said is the truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. <gasps> I am not a fisherman. See, he admits it himself. <laughs> oh, God, stop. Stop playing. Oh, you're funny. That's not what I meant. Oh. Innocent, perhaps? Ooh, what a twist. Ooh. Yeah. Prosecutor, you have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? On this point, at least, falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monsieur Kingley's testimony is false. Ah, no! This doesn't mean that Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. But I did see something, I really did. Alright, so maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty looking fox, I made that part of the story up. Bruh. But I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder. A swan? Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Ah, uh, your honor? Judge Romulus? We're out of time. We're ten minutes overdue to start on the Hare versus Tortoise trial. <laughs> it's that late already. Curses. I was hoping we could have the case wrapped up in a single trial session. Oh! So this one's longer. Okay, that's good, because we have more investigating we need to do. I wasn't sure if this game would do that. I actually couldn't remember. But that's good, that's good. It is a shame. But ultimately, an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy sentencing. Yes, alright, I don't need to hear your moralizing. Court will resume this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. Ooh, excuse me. Speaking of nine o'clock, it's late. I'm tired. Uh, hopefully this is over. The, this part. <laughs> Prosecutor, do your damn job. Get this stupid fox a conviction already. Damn. I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, your honor. A lot came up in that trial, huh? Yeah, no doubt about that. But something's bothering me. Why would that fisherman guy, Monsieur Kingley, lie on the witness stand? Uh, he might like attention, but I think he was coerced. Well, it's possible that he was coerced or bribed. That's what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman into making up a story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about the trial. Uh, a lot of things are fishy as heck, but I'm gonna say the judge. 
Judge Romulus, he's acting without a shred of professionalism. He he's obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he is in discovering the truth. But why? Maybe he has a vendetta against Spanish royalty? I'm not so sure. There must be something else at work here. Excuse me, um, uh, excuse me, Monsieur Falcon. I thought it was him. Sorry to bother you, but uh, this letter just arrived. I think it's for you. A letter for me? I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier status, Rupert? Oh, hush, hush, Sparrowson. I don't need to be uh, pitied by my by a first-year dropout. Oh, good comeback. <laughs> so what does the letter say, Falcon? It's... It's a threat. A threat made with cut-out newspaper letters. Whoa, I didn't know those things actually existed. Let me see. Falcon, stop your investigation or there will be consequences. <laughs> Why'd you do that voice, Rosen? I don't know. Scary. There is no question that this letter originated from Major Howell's murderer. He or she must be aware that we are getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right. Well, why would a person write with, cu with cut-out newspaper letters like this? Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Although I can't help but wonder why they would bother, since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We're still going ahead with our investigation, though, right? Absolutely. Oh yes, absolutely. If a lawyer were deterred every time they received a threatening letter, they would never get any work done. Besides, with only three days before the next trial session, we can't afford to be worrying about petty things like this. Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Well, you're right. Let's make those days count. All right. A new day. January 18, Tuesday. All right. We've got quite a lot to do in the next episode, but I'm going to leave this episode right here. A uh, perfect place to save. It's a little short, but we're good. We're fine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. And until next time, have a nice day. Bye!